I want to take just a moment and talk to you about grouping objects in your level. Already, as we add more and more static meshes, our level is progressively getting more complex, and we're getting a lot of different pieces added. I mean, if we take a look, each one of these panels is a separate static mesh. Of course, the doors, all these beams across the ceiling. And at some point, that's really going to start to, to stack up. If we place these objects into groups, it's easy for us to select objects by groups, show and hide different things. It's just, it's a nice organizational system that I'd like you to get in the habit of early on. Now, we're just going to start with static meshes, but you don't have to limit yourself to static meshes. Any actor placed in your level can be positioned in a group. To create groups, we need to use the group editor, and there's two ways to get to it. The most direct way is to come under View, come down to Browser Windows, and choose the group editor. But I'm lazy and I don't like clicking on so many different menus and submenus. Uh, it's just personal preference. So what I usually do is click on the content browser and jump over to the group editor tab. It's the exact same thing. Now, this has got a really simple user interface. On the left, you have all of the groups available in your level. On the right, you have all of the objects available in any selected group. So if I click on the none group, you see every single object in the level. It's because the none group is kind of like your default group. As you create objects, they're automatically placed in the none group. Very easy. Now, there's some menus up here, too. The menus are pretty straightforward. Your group menu is where you're going to do most of your work. This allows you to create new groups with a new command. You can rename existing groups. You can delete groups. You can add or remove selected actors from a group. Note that delete selected actors from group will not delete the actual actor. It's just going to pull it out of that group. You can select actors or deselect actors using the groups, and you can make all groups visible. Very easy stuff. What I want to do is I want to create a new group. Now, the workflow for doing this is that you need to select some actor first. So let's decide on what we want to create a group for. Let's create a group for the supports that run up our walls and along the ceiling. And we could actually include this little kind of I-beam piece that runs down the center of the room as well. So... Let's click on this guy, and I'm just going to take a moment and select. Whoops, didn't mean to move that, so let's hit Control-Z to move that back down. In fact, if I don't want to do that again, if you don't actually accidentally want to move any meshes, make sure that you come up here to the main toolbar and switch on selection mode, and then you won't do that anymore. So now let's hold down Control, and I'm just selecting all of the meshes that make up the supports. And grab all these guys, and... I'll try to do this all in one go, so that's these two, and then these two, and then we'll rotate the camera around, and grab these guys, and the corner piece, and all the way down, and there, and there. So there's all of our supports. Now, with these guys selected, we're just going to go to Group, choose New, and it's going to ask you for a group name. An obvious name for this might be Supports. Hit OK. And there we go. Now, we didn't notice much of a change here, but what happened is all of these static meshes were pulled out of the none group and placed in the supports group. So we can click, and there we go. Now, kind of a cool additional bonus feature is that now if I uncheck supports, those objects actually disappear. Now, if they're still on inside the group editor, if you leave this checkbox on, you can also come over here to your viewport options. And if we scroll down, you'll see hidden groups. We can check supports in here, and we can hide them from the actual viewport. Now, this is on a viewport-by-viewport viewport basis if you use this menu. So we're only hiding them in perspective right now. Just also keep in mind, however, that settings inside the group editor kind of trump any settings inside the viewport options. So if we switch off their visibility here, we can't switch their visibility back on uh, here inside the hidden groups. Even if we hit show all, they still stay hidden until we come over here and make sure they're on in the group editor. So if you're having problems with visibility, make sure that you do check your settings in the group editor. All right. Now, I want to add this center eye beam as well as the supports for it into the supports group. So let's grab all of this. Now, to do this, we just select the actors we need, come into the group menu, and let's choose add selected actors to group. I'm going to make sure I have the supports group selected first, and we do. And there we go. So now as I hide that, you'll notice all those disappear, which is great. Now let's create a group for all of these actors. So the door and all these really cool wall panel pieces that we stuck in over here. And with all those selected, we'll just go to group, new group, and we'll call this door 
wall paneling and hit OK. And now we can hide that if we want to. And a really cool way to do this, and this is just uh, one of those things, if you switch over to your lighting only mode, you can eventually take this down to where all you see are some bare walls. So I'm just going to select all of my shelving here. Actually, let's put it back on lit mode. I just thought that was cool. So we'll slide over here to grab our supports, and you got to click right on that support. It doesn't matter that we have the wall selected, though I am going to go ahead and deselect it. And we want these guys too, so let's grab everybody in one go. The good news is by doing this, I mean, you're avoiding having to select this stuff in the future by doing this. You kind of only have to go through this selection process once. All right, now we have all of the shelves selected, so let's go back to group, new group, and an obvious name for this would be shelves. Hit OK, and now we can hide those as well. So great, now all of our objects are in groups, except for our work lights. I mean, if we really, really wanted to, we could put those in a group, but I'm, I'm not going to go that far with it. So we can show and hide these at will now. It's very easy to select them. For instance, we could uh, grab the door and wall paneling group, come under group, and choose select actors. So we can select those whenever we like. Now, moving forward from here, I'm going to... Uh, in the next video, open up a level that's already got all of its static meshes in it, and those are going to be broken down into groups. And what I'm going to do is take you on a tour of what was placed and how the groups actually worked out so you can see how it was constructed and rebuild it on your own if you so desire. However, I recommend that you kind of build your own level from this point. If, you, if you'd like to follow along, you're going to get all the information you need by checking out the groups in the next video, but you're armed now. You know how to bring in static meshes, you know how to place materials, You've got all kinds of power at your fingertips, so I recommend you make use of it. That's going to wrap things up for this video. Be sure to save your level, and I'll catch you in the next video.